Hi everyone, I'm Brian with Obedia and PC Audio Labs, and in today's video we're going to be talking about how to set up and start recording audio in Persona Studio One. I'm using Persona Studio One version 4, the professional version. Uh, however, this is going to be the same in all the other versions of Studio One, so you can follow right along. So I've opened Studio One, and the start page opens up, and in the start page I'm going to click on Create a New Song. Now first of all, I will be presented with a new song dialog box, which has a number of tabs. The first tab is Styles. Using Styles, I can choose a Studio One song that's been pre-made by Personas that is meant to match up with the style of music that I might wish to make. This will instantiate tracks, virtual instruments, and effects uh, into that song immediately and do it for me without my having to do it and allow me to be set up for success to immediately jump into the process of recording. Then I have a tab labeled Interfaces. Interfaces will list a number of Personas audio interfaces. Uh, and by selecting one of these audio interfaces, I can create a Studio One song that's matched up with my audio interface. I could, for instance, find the Studio 192 here and then click to open that. And that would create a new Studio One song that would be set up to immediately start recording with the Studio 192, including the fat channel insert uh, effects and tracks and etc. Finally, I have the user tab. The user tab is where I have any templates I've made for myself. I like to make templates so that I can be able to recall a Studio One song that has the same settings that I needed uh, for recording multiple times and things like that. Now today I'm just going to go ahead and create a new song and I'm going to uh, uh, take a look firstly at the fact that I can set a song title. Now you may want to set a song title if you know what you're going to be recording. If not, that's perfectly fine. By default, your songs will be saved to the location that you have set as the default location to save your user data for Studio One. You can also set the sample rate, the resolution, time-based song length, tempo, time signature, key signature, and other uh, settings for your song before you jump into your new song. Then when you hit OK, you'll have a new song created for you. And again, I just created a completely blank, empty song for myself right now. So I'm going to jump into the thing that I know people are always going to ask me first, which is, Brian, how do I just start recording some audio? How do I just make a track and start recording? Well, it's super easy. You can click on the plus symbol on the top left-hand corner here, which will add new tracks. Or you can also hit the T key on your keyboard. Either way, you'll get the Add Tracks dialog box. Now, by default, new tracks will usually be named Track and simply Track. I encourage you to change the name of the track. And the reason for that is that your tracks are going to uh, record audio data and audio files that are named after your track. And just having a bunch of audio files just named track is not going to do you any good. So name your tracks if you can after what you're going to be recording on the track. If you know what you're going to be recording, enter that name into the name box. It'll save you a lot of trouble down the road. I can assure you of that. After you set the name of your track, you can then move on and you can select the type of track that you're going to be recording, audio, instrument, automation, or if you're creating a folder track. So some of these are for recording and some of these are more utility based. You can set the color for the track, set the format for the track, mono or stereo, and then select a preset. Presets are useful because they will set you up for success with a number of insert effects immediately instantiated on the channel strip. You can set the input from your audio interface and the output to your audio interface as well. Then click OK and a new track has been created. Now. On the left hand side of my track, I have the basic track inspector. Now this little box is pretty important. I can expand it by clicking on the I button. When I click on the I, this opens the expanded track inspector. This is where I see the in-depth information for this track. We'll talk more about the inspector in future videos. In the basic inspector, I've got four important buttons, the mute, the solo, the record, and the monitor button. And the monitor button is blue. When I enable the record button, the monitor button, becomes enabled as well. Now monitoring lets me hear what's being sent into this track as I'm recording it. And that's how I would be able to monitor myself playing my guitar or singing or any other instrument into this channel strip in Studio One. Channel strip being a track onto which I am recording that data inside of Studio One. So uh, I am almost set up here to dive into the process of recording. Before I can do it, I need to do just a couple other things. Uh, which is I need to, of course, arm this track for recording, in which case I can leave the arm armed, the uh, recording arm button armed. I can disable monitoring if I don't want to listen to monitoring. And then I can adjust the volume for this track. Now, this fader that you see right here, 
This fader is the output of this track, so the output gain. Sometimes folks think that this is the input gain from their audio interface, meaning you would change the volume of what's being sent into this track using this fader. Not so. That is the output gain from that track that you're working with. Just keep that in mind. That's something that I see confusing some folks from time to time. So again, I'm almost there to begin the process of recording. I need to set an input, which I can do by clicking on the input pull down menu. I can also group this track with other tracks if I wish, and I can change this track between mono and stereo settings if I wish as well. I can also double click to change its name. Now, after I've done all of these settings, I need to go ahead and set myself up to record. So I'm going to click on the record arm button on my track. Now I need to get ready to send some audio signal into this track. In order to do that, I'm going to open the console. I'll open the console by either double clicking on some empty space on the track inspector or hitting the F3 key on my keyboard. Either way, I'll be presented with the console. The console is where I gain access to the volume fader for this track as well as the mute the solo record and monitor controls. I can also instantiate inserts, which of course are effects plugins and things that will allow me to affect the audio that I've recorded on this track as well. So this is where I can take further and more in-depth control of my track, adding inserts, allowing me to add plugins and effects and sound to my track. And we'll talk about that in a future video as well. So now next up, I need to go ahead and start sending some signal, some audio into my Studio One channel strip, into my track. So I'll start playing some audio into this channel strip and then that way I can monitor the signal and see how it sounds because I'm going to want to pay attention to how loud or how quiet that signal is. I want to make sure that I'm getting a nice signal in but nothing that's going too hot. So in this case I'm recording some audio. I'm not yet recording should I say. I'm running some audio into my channel strip and I can see it's running a little hot. I have that red clip icon right there. So I want to adjust the volume of what is sending this audio into this channel strip and again I'm going to adjust the uh, instrument or the device that is sending audio into my audio interface. I am not going to adjust the volume fader on my channel strip. If I did that, it would only change the audio output. It wouldn't stop me from clipping on the input bus, the input bus being what is carrying audio into Studio One. So I need to just keep that in mind. After I have gotten my audio signal to be, uh, you know, not clipping, but nice and hot, I see that green bar bouncing just a little bit above, let's say the negative 12 decibel mark right there on my channel strip, I'm set up to start the process of actually recording. So I'll take a look at the transport. Now the transport is just like a tape deck, if you're familiar with tape decks, which I think most of us probably are, maybe some of us aren't, and that's perfectly fine. But the transport's a lot like a tape deck, and it's got a record button on it. I will click on record, and I'll start recording some audio. So now I'm recording some audio into my track and onto my channel strip right here in Studio One. So I've recorded this audio, and this way I know that I've recorded because I have an audio region. An audio region is a waveform. I can see this waveform in blue right here. And this audio region means that yes, I've recorded some audio and I can see what I have recorded. Now I can continue recording if I'd like by then picking up from the, po the point that I previously stopped recording. The white line that denotes where my playback is going to happen is where I can start the process of recording again if I wish. Now if I'm happy with what I've recorded, I can disarm the option for recording. I can move on with recording. Uh, another track or maybe I could go into the process of mixing or something along those lines all depends on what I would be doing I could also begin the process of editing my audio as well and we're going to be talking about that in a future video as well so there you have it guys that's a pretty straightforward way to get in and start the process of recording again make sure that your audio interface is set up and ready to go we've got a video for you to check out that allows you to learn how to do that make sure your audio interface is set up and ready to go if your audio interface is ready to go and you set up your inputs and outputs, which we also have a video for, and you know that that is all set and you've got your instrument or your device connected to your audio interface, you can start the process of recording by creating a new track, arming for record, checking that signal level in, adjusting on your audio interface, and then simply hitting record in Studio One and boom, you've got an audio uh, region that you've recorded and you can begin the process of recording more or mixing or maybe recording an instrument all of these things you can find in other videos that will be given to you guys. So there you have it, guys. As always, I'm Brian with Obedia and PC Audio Labs. I want to thank you for tuning in. If you'd like to learn how to use Persona Studio One and other digital audio hardware and software in real time with a professional digital audio trainer just like myself, 
and give us a call at Obedia PC Audio Labs. We'll help you to tame your technology. That's what we do best here at Obedia PC Audio Labs. Thanks as always for tuning in, guys. I'll see you next time and take care.